good morning, Lake Michigan Christian Center. I'm so glad you could join us for our online service. I've got a great word about two shifts that I believe God is making in our lives as a fellowship. It's really exciting. I hope you're going to stick around to hear it. But until we get to that, we've got an online meet and greet. Do me a favor. Send a link to the service to everyone you know. Let's get as many people watching our online services on a weekly basis. All right. I'll see you on the other side of the meet and greet. Good morning, LMCC family. I'm so glad you could be with us for this week's online service. I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack this morning and just really share from my heart some of the things that God has been impressing upon me um, concerning us as a church and, and concerning perhaps where we need to go. And this all centers around something I've been praying about probably for the last month or so. And, and one of the ways that I, I've, obviously I pray, and I pray in my home and, and so forth, but, but a lot of times I have some really good prayer times when I'm running. Probably because when you're running, you're in pain, so you're, you're more humble then. <laughs> and, and one of the things, two things I've been praying uh, over the past month, even as I've gone out running, is simply this. Well, the main thing I've been praying is simply this. God, are there two or three things that I could do as a pastor to pivot, to perhaps get our church on a better footing moving forward uh, as a fellowship. And I, I've been praying for, for that daily, uh, and in particular when I run. Um, and I really believe that the Lord answered this prayer a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, I went to North Carolina to, with my wife, Christy, to visit our daughter, Lexi, in um, Raleigh-Durham. North Carolina, and spent the weekend with her, had a great time, it was a great fall weekend, perfect, absolutely perfect weather. And we visited a church on that Sunday morning, Summit Church, we went to the main campus. Summit is a, is a very large church, I think it's the 17th largest church in America, and they're known for being a really flourishing church. And I, I went just to kind of go, my daughter wanted to go, and we went, and, and didn't really expect a lot other than just to you know, hear a good message and to, to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Well, to make a real long story short, as, as the service concluded, they had an altar call for people to give their hearts to the Lord. And so I'm, I'm, I'm there and, and worship's going on and, and they just had a really good worship team. But in particular, they had a worship leader um, whose name is Brandon Murphy, who's actually a CCM artist, I didn't know this. But when he sang, there was such an anointing upon his voice and his words and and i really got touched and so i'm weeping right and, and i really felt to go to the altar but i'm like well this is a salvation you know a call for salvation and i kind of shared that with christy go so so i'm at the altar right and and you know n number of people that are getting prayed for you know giving their hearts to the lord and i'm just weeping i mean god is just moving on my heart in the middle of worship, in particular when this young man, Brandon Murphy, was singing. There was such a powerful anointing upon his life, and I was able to actually share with him and minister to him a little bit after the service. But as this was going on, God met me. In fact, let me just say it this way. God met me in a way that I haven't been touched like this by God since the Brownsville Revival back in the late 90s and the various ministries that I was connected with here at Lake Michigan Christian Center. And, and, and I was weeping before the Lord. And, and in fact, several days after that, just randomly throughout the day, I would just start weeping before the Lord. And of course, as I'm going to teach at the local college, I'm like, God, not here. And of course, God visited me there. And hey, wonderful stuff. But I felt like God spoke something to me because I didn't realize how dry I was until I had received from the Lord at the altar. I had been really dry and I didn't know it. And I had been really tired and weary of ministry. And I didn't know it until I was touched by God. And again, name, this is a Baptist church, y'all, right? And yet God sovereignly moved in a, a very powerful, powerful way there that particular Sunday 
so much so that this is two weeks later and I still sense the abiding presence of the Lord uh, from that altar time. And I really felt like the Lord spoke to me this. You see how tired you are? You see how weary you are? You see how dry you've been? You needed that. Well, guess what? The people at Lake Michigan Christian Center need that too. Because there's something about getting away from your setting, right? I'm at a church. Nobody knows my name. Right? I'm not expected to do anything. I'm not expected to preach or, hey, you got a key for this office, right? None of that stuff. I was just going there to receive. And I felt like God said, you received from me because you desperately needed a touch, a refreshing from me. You need to bring that to LMCC. So I'm saying all that to say this, that's the first thing God spoke to me about what could I do to perhaps turn and pivot uh, as a church? How could we turn and pivot as a church? And so I have really felt impressed to start bringing in more worship teams uh, and gifted and anointed speakers at our church in 2024. Because if I needed that, you need that too. And, and again, do we have good worship here? Sure we do. Do we have good times of ministry of the word at the altar? Yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> I'm speaking, right? And I hope so. But, but there's something different when you get somebody outside of the church, anointed worship leaders and things of that nature, where... <clears throat> The worship, our worship team, our ministry of helps people, our, you know, ushers, greeters, whatever, they're not expected to do anything other than, hey, just be in the presence of the Lord during a time of worship. And of course, we're doing that on November 17th. We're having a special night of worship from 7 to 9.30 p.m. And I hope you can come with the North Point worship team from Grand Rapids. But I really felt like God said, you need to continually bring in more outside worship and more outside voices that can impart the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Lord, the anointing to our church. And again, this isn't novel. And yet, of course, coming out of COVID and all that stuff, it's been harder to get people in and all that kind of stuff. But I really feel like God's saying, do this. And again, are there some scriptures that undergird this? Sure there are. There's a number of them about being in the presence of the Lord. A few of my favorite are Acts 3.19 where the apostles say, repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out so that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing, we need that refreshing in our lives. And, and Ephesians 5.18 is another one, right? Do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. This idea of be being filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a Greek deponent uh, and and the word uh, be filled basically means continually be filled continually be refilled continually have a sense of renewal come to your life uh, and, and of course that's what we're trying to do and that's what I really believe God wants for us as a church so I'm been on the phone reaching out to different worship leaders trying to get Brandon Murphy to come to our church uh, hopefully next February or March we'll see what happens uh, we're looking at perhaps bringing the North Point worship team in again, bringing some other speakers in that can bring some anointing to us. Again, we need this church, and I believe that is something significant for us. The second answer to prayer came at that church service at Summit Church in uh, Durham a few weeks ago during the announcements. Again, you generally don't think of hearing from God during the announcements, and yet as they were announcing the various and sundry things that the church was doing, they also said this to an effect, hey, um, just so you know, we at Summit Church, our vision is to plant a thousand churches throughout the United States and the world. And just as they said that, something went off into my spirit about we need to do that as a church. Hey, to be candid with you, some days I'm trying to get more than 100 people in our sanctuary on a Sunday morning, right? And then I'm hearing the vision of this church. Hey, our vision is to plant over a thousand churches globally. And I'm going, what have you done lately? And it really challenged my spirit to begin to pivot Lake Michigan Christian Center to become a re reproducing church, right? Our ch church that is able to reproduce every single ministry that we currently have. Why? so that we can go and plant other churches or maybe satellite campuses or things of that nature. Is that a big goal? Is that, is that a huge, huge vision? You bet it is. Are we ready to do that now? Well, 
if God is directing it, then I guess we can. And I'm well aware of the hurdles and the obstacles, right? But I really believe God has been laying that on my heart. What does it say in Acts 1.8? And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. And, and so if we really understand Jesus' vision for his people, we are meant to be a world-changing institution. We're literally supposed to go to all the world. And one of the paradigm shifts we need to do as a church is to move from an attractional church to a reproducing church that reproduces other church and actually begins to foster a movement of other churches that network together with other churches and reproduce and plant other churches. That is a huge paradigm shift from our current setting where all of us and all we know is an attractional church. Hey, come, come to the service, come be a part of the service, come be a part of what God's doing at the service. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's great. However, that's not a big enough vision. That's not the, the great commission as Jesus envisioned it. And if you follow what went on in the book of Acts, you see the planting of churches all throughout the Greco-Roman world, all throughout the, the, what we call the modern Middle East now, and into Turkey and those areas, and into Europe, right? And, and they had a vision for continually multiplying themselves, and they did it through social networks, they did it through relational networking. And, and so, so this is where I sense God is taking us. Do I know exactly how all of this is going to fit in? No, I don't. I do know some next steps, and we're going to begin to pursue those. But I really believe that what God has laid on our hearts are two things as a church and, and ways we need to be moving. We need to be moving toward empowerment. We need to be moving toward refreshing in the presence of the Lord, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in the presence of the Lord. And second of all, we need to shift and turn, turn, turn our focus on becoming a reproducing church that reproduces other churches in our area and through the wider world. And doesn't that sound a lot like Acts 1-8, right? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's the refreshing. That's the enabling. That's the divine enablement, right, that the Holy Spirit gives in the presence of the Lord. And then, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost bounds you there. That is a multiplying, reproducing, outreach-oriented people that are not content just to stay in the four walls of a church, but take the gospel in other settings, plant churches and movements and satellite campuses in other settings, right? That's where I feel the Lord is taking us. And I'm speaking from my heart. I'm speaking candidly. I'm not teaching as intensely as I am. But I really sense the hand of the Lord on this. And this is going to require a shift in my heart and in your heart if you're a part of our church. And if you're not a part of our church, we'd love to have you become a part of our church and what God is doing here. But I believe our best days as a people are ahead of us. And God is trying to expand, enlarge, his vision for us as a people. And my prayer for myself and my prayer for you is that we have pliable, flexible enough wineskins that we're able to contain what God is trying to do. And it'll take a shift in focus. It'll take a shift in emphasis. It'll take a shift in a lot of areas. But again, if this is something that God is behind, we can do this. Amen? So, that's what I believe God is doing in our church. That's what's on the horizon for us as a church. And a first step for all of you, again, is remember the special night of worship, Friday, November 17th, 7 to 9.30 p.m. with the North Point Worship Team. Why don't you come? Why don't you be a part of it? Why don't you bring a friend? In fact, why don't you bring a busload of people and be a part of this, this special time in the presence of the Lord? The first step in a journey that I believe the Lord is leading us on. And I'm very, very excited about it as pastor. Can we pray? Father, I thank you for this time together. And Lord, I believe you're leading us to special times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord as a church body. But you're also leading us to be a reproducing people, a reproducing church, a church that reproduces itself and is able to plant other churches, satellite campuses, the movement of God spreading well beyond the comfy confines 
of our local church building into the wider regions of the world. And so, Father God, I thank you for what you're doing. And I pray, God, give us eyes to see, give us ears to hear, give us faith, Lord God, to be about the Father's business in this new season. I ask for this and I pray for this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, it was great to be with you. And until next week, I call you blessed. Take care.